Well, we are live, praise the Lord. Now, how you doing today? Are you doing good? Well, hey, I'm Jeremiah Smith, and I'm so glad to get to be with you today. Praise the Lord. It's going to be a wonderful time together. Do you believe that? You think we're going to have a good time? Are you taking care of your spirit today? Are you taking care of your heart? Are you, you know, out of it flow the issues of life. Amen. So that's just like my pastor used to say all the time, garbage in and then garbage out, right? So whatever you're putting into your heart, that's what's coming out. What are you putting into your heart today? Are you putting the good things in your heart today? I believe you are. You pop this you pop this message on and you're here with us today. I believe that you want to put the right things in your heart today. Do you believe that? Amen. I believe that the good people of God want to put the right things in their heart and we want to take care of our spirits so that we can do the things of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God wants to do some wonderful things in your life. Praise the Lord. Don't look at someone around you. Don't look at the person next to you. He wants to do something, do good things in your life. And he wants to reach out to you. Amen. He cares about you. You know, that's, I was uh, quoting the scripture the other day when I was doing coffee confessions, I believe it was last week, talking about how he cares about even the number of hairs on your head. He knows how many hairs are on your head. You think about that, you know, if he thinks about every detail of how many hairs are on your head, he cares about every detail of your life, doesn't he? He cares about you. He cares about what you're going through. You know, the Holy Spirit's with you. He's the great teacher. He's the great help. He's the counselor. He knows all the things that are going on with you, and he can help you in this life. He can counsel you. He can teach you. He can guide you. He can help you. Praise the Lord. He's the great helper, isn't he? You say, well, I need help. Well, you've got the great helper on the inside of you. He knows everything, doesn't he? Not just some things. Not part of stuff. No, he's the helper. He he knows the Father, doesn't he, right? He, he gets the great communication that he gives to you from the Father, amen? And God's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and he knows how to help you in your circumstances that you're going through today. He's watching you. He, he doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He knows exactly what you're going through, and he, he's there to help you today, praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost is right there in your and your chair, he's right there in your car today, in your headphones, wherever you're at. Amen. He's there to help you today, praise the Lord. And he's going to guide and direct you, I believe, this week. Do you believe this could be the best week you ever had? Do you believe this could be the greatest week that you ever seen God move in your life? Well, you know, what are you expecting? You know, it's according to what you believe. And the, all things are possible to them that believe, right? And you got to believe and have some expectation for God to do some wonderful things this week for you. You say, why do you care about this week? Well, you know, this is Sunday. We're kicking off the week and we want you to start looking for good things this week from God. You know, God wants to do some great and mighty things through you. Well, you say, well, why do, why do you care so much about that, Jeremiah? Why do you care about me? I want to see you do good things for God. I want you to have a good relationship with him and grow in him and fulfill the destiny that God has for your life here while you're here today. You know, this life is short, right? Life is but a vapor is what the scripture says. You're not here that long, you know, and you, you should enjoy this life walking with God and fulfilling the purpose that he has for your life. You know, life doesn't have to be boring. You can have an adventure and faith with God every day if you're willing to listen to the Holy Spirit and let God guide you and direct you and praise the Lord in your life. Do you believe that? I believe that. Well, you know, you can catch us here. We try to be here every Sunday at uh, 4 p.m. Central Time. Sometimes I'm just a few minutes late. You might just watch for me there. And then on uh, Wednesdays, you know, I try to be there and do messages at uh, 6 p.m. Central Time. If I'm not there, then I'll post a message at jeremiasmithministries.podbeam.com. We try to make sure we're feeding you spiritually all the time. Hey, Amen. you don't need to grow spiritually. We have to grow. <laughs> God doesn't want you to stay where you're at. He wants you to grow and mature in him, you know, and as you're growing and maturing in him, you can reach out to others and help them to grow and mature in him and help them to fulfill what God's called them to do in their lives. You know, we're not called to do the same things. We're called to different things. We have different purposes and different destinies, you know, but God, he can help you to help that other person and guide them and direct them, you know and be a mighty help to them in their life with the Holy Spirit working through you and being a blessing to them. You know, you, you're not supposed to just be to yourself, not an island to yourself. You're supposed to be encouraging others and reaching out to others. Just like I'm here today with you, I'm trying to encourage you and reach out to others so that you can grow spiritually and fulfill the purpose that God has for your life. Do you believe he has some good things for you? 
I believe he's got some good things for you. And you, you know, you got to believe it. You know, I, it's not just about me believing in you, you know, but you got to believe in you that God can do some great things for you. He, you know, he, he loves you and he wants some good things to happen in your life. Praise the Lord. So you can catch us at those times. Like I said, if I'm not here for some reason, you can listen to those posted messages. If you'd like to, you can listen to the live broadcast. Like right now, we're live on Podbeam. If you're out there and live on Podbeam, we love you. So glad you joined us. And I hope that you're enjoying the word of God today. And we are so glad you took the time to, to tune in to this wonderful, wonderful message. Praise the Lord. You know, you can listen to rebroadcasts on Spotify, Google Music, iTunes, Listen Notes, Podbeam, TuneIn off Alexi, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Deezer, uh, Pandora. You can listen to us on Amazon Music, Verbal, iVox, and many others. Uh, if you want to listen to that whole list there, you can check those out at jeremiasmithministries.podbeam.com. Hit the media tab. There's lots of places. You don't have to get a new app. You just search and see if Jeremiah Smith Ministries is in there. And most of the time, you'll find that we're there. We're on most of all the uh, places you can be there to listen to the messages. And of course, we post this message. We try to put them on YouTube. I'm videotaping right now. If you like the videos and you like to watch streaming videos, you know you can watch it on YouTube. And uh, we post that about 9 o'clock. And we try to have them up there by 9 o'clock for you. Uh, so you can check those out. If you'd like to give, you can give. Luke 6.38 says give. It shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. My goodness, think about that. You know, if you want big things to happen in your life, you got to do something. You know, you sitting there doesn't accomplish anything. You have to give something and so that God can bless you back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over in your life. I'm not pressing to give to our ministry because ours is a free ministry to you to be a blessing to you. But if you want to give, you can go to jeremiasmithministries.podbean.com and hit the giving tab. But, you know, you need to be given somewhere so that God can bless you back good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You say, well, I don't have anything to give. You could pray. Take some time and pray, you know, and I believe God will bless you for you taking the time to pray. Pray for us. Pray for other ministers. Pray for God to do his will on the earth, you know, so God can fulfill his plan that he has here on this earth. So if you like to give, you can give. You can't outgive God. Do you believe that? No, you can't outgive him. Luke 6.38 says, do do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You know, whatever it is you're sowing, love. If you're sowing negative stuff, if you're sowing, you know, your finances, if you're sowing uh, anything that you're sowing is coming back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Look over your life and you'll see it's what you're sowing is what you're getting in your life, you know. It's all coming back to you. If you want friends, you got to be friendly. You say, well, I don't have no friends. Well, you got to be a friend. <laughs> so being a friend to someone else, be a faithful friend, be a, a friend that people can count on, you know, and then the, I believe you'll reap more friends, you know, it's the, what do you need today? Well, you know, be that for someone else. And I believe God will bless you for doing that. Do you believe that? I believe it. Well, you know, we're going to get into our Bibles. We're going to be talking about something new today. I felt like the Lord has put on my heart. Grab your Bible, get your tablet, get your phone. I've got my Bible here. Get your tablet, get your phone. Got my Bible right here. And uh, get your notes. Got my notes here. Get your coffee. Got my coffee here. Good old brother Michael gave me this coffee cup. Amen. Get yourself ready. Then we're going to get into the Word today. You want to go ahead and pray? Let's go ahead and pray. You know, before we started, you know, my son prayed for this podcast. He's, he cares about you. And he, we came in agreement today for you to get saved. If you're not saved out there, for you to be touched. If you need to be touched out there, don't leave without getting what you need today. Right? Don't leave this podcast without getting what you need from God today. Amen? you got to reach out and receive. You've got to step out and let God touch you right there where you're at. It's nothing about Jeremiah. But you've got to reach out to God to get what you need today. And we're going to pray for you here as we pray for the podcast as we get started here. Father, we just thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for your mercy. We thank you, Father, that you're so faithful to us. And Father, as that one's listening, Father, we ask for total healing for them right there with their heart, Father, right there where they're at today. We ask for total healing of their heart, physical bodies needing to be touched today. We ask for total healing for them today in Jesus' name. 
right there. Somebody's needing to touch in their body. We ask for total healing for them right now in Jesus' name. The Bible says we agree concerning anything that we shall ask. Could it be done? We agree with you right now in Jesus' name for total healing for you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And that one right there dealing with depression that's sad and stressed. We ask for total healing of them right there where they're at. The devil let them go in Jesus' name right there where they're at. We ask for total healing for them. And Father, we ask that you heal them of depression and help them, Lord, to be encouraged. Help them be filled with joy today. Touch them with your spirit today. Father, help them be filled with your joy in your presence, Father. Help them not leave the way they came today in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name right now. That one that has a need, Father, we ask that you help that need to be met. Whatever it is today, Father, you know what it is. We ask that, that, for that need to be met right now in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Father, for it. And Father, as we get this message, Father, we thank you that you're our teacher. We thank you that you're my helper. We thank you that you know all the intents of the heart, Father. Lord, speak to these people's hearts today, Father. We ask your Holy Spirit to be the teacher, be the help. Flood us with light. Help us to see some stuff we've never seen before. And Father, we ask, Lord, that you remove burdens and yokes, things that people are carrying in here today. Remove them right now. In Jesus' name we pray. We just thank you, Father, for it. We thank you for someone getting touched right there where they're at today, Father. And we give you the praise. We give you the glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, Father. We Before we go, Father, we just magnify you. We lift you up. Father, we thank you for taking care of our needs, taking care of all the stuff that we're dealing with today, Father, Lord. We thank you that you're faithful and being with us, taking care of our families, taking care of us. And we just give you the praise and glory for it today in Jesus' name. If we thank you that no one leaves without being touched today, Father, by your spirit today, we pray in Jesus' name. Help everybody to get something from you today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, are you glad you came already? Amen. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> We're going to have a good time in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, let's go over to Luke, the second chapter, the 49th verse. And you say, well, Jeremiah, you're already hitting us with scriptures. Well, we're going to pump you full of scriptures, right? Faith comes by hearing, right? You don't, if you don't hear something, then you don't get faith, Right? Faith comes by hearing. You've got to hear some things, right? You know, when Jesus would go out for to pray for people and pray for healing for people, he's a teacher. He taught. He knew faith came by hearing. Think about that today. You know, people have got to hear the message. they got to hear the good news, you know, and they need to know what's in it for them, you know. The, the, the thing that separates, you know, a child of God from just anybody is that there's benefits to being a child of God. Wonderful, wonderful, precious benefits to being a child of God. And they want to know what's in it for me. You know, there's some things in there for you, <laughs> right? Jesus came to give us what? He, he said, I came to give you good news, right? And there's a lot in there for you. We have peace that passes all understanding. Did you know that today? We have joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. Did you know that today, <laughs> right? You know, it's in there for you. So many benefits are in there for you, not like the world has. There's so many benefits in there for you today, you know. You say, well, man, that's different than the religion I've heard of. That's right. It's a whole lot different than any other religion out there, you know. This is the way. This is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And there's only one way to the Father, and it's through Jesus. Amen. So let's get into our subject today. We're going to be talking about divine appointments. Amen. You know, do you believe God has some divine appointments in line for you? I believe he has them for every Christian. I believe he has divine appointments. He's got some things set up for you. Did you know that? My wife likes to talk about pathways. Did you know about, you know about pathways? You know, God has pathways and he has a path for you. You're supposed to be on a certain path, you know. And it's important that you know about those pathways. And God has all the things lined up within that path that you're needing. And so it's important that you're on the pathway that God has for your life. Some paths will take you anywhere. But some pathways will take you where you need to go, right? And God, he's a light unto your pathway, right? And he'll guide you on that pathway. He'll direct your steps. And all, he says the good, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. There's, you're supposed to be taking direct steps a certain way. 
But, you know, you have to be looking for that pathway, you know. And I'm going to talk to you and give you some keys about how to get in line for divine appointments. So let's talk about that today. Luke 2, the 49th verse, it says, And he said unto them, and this is Jesus in the temple. He's a young man in the temple, and he's already studying the law, <laughs> right? And they're like, where did he go? You know, their kid took off. They're like, where is he at, you know? And young Jesus is already studying at the temple. And Luke, in the second chapter, the 49th verse, he said unto them, How is it that you had uh, had to look for me? He said, he's like, why are you even looking for me? <laughs> right? He said, did you not see and know that it is necessary as a duty for me to be in my father's house and a, a company uh, occupied about my father's business? And that's what he says, and occupied about my father's business. Are you occupied with your father's business today? You know, those are the people that get blessed, or those that are occupied with their father's business. It's not, you know, you, whatever that is today for you, it may not be the same as it is for me. But are you about the father's business for you? You say, why is that important? Because that's part of the pathway you need to be on is being about your father's business. Jesus was about his father's business. That's why so many supernatural things happened in his life. Is because he was about his father's business. You say, well, nothing's happening in my life. Stuff's not happening. I don't see wonderful things happening in my life. Well, are you about your father's business? Right? And what is his business? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that, you know. But, you know, you need to be about the master's business. Be about God's business. And he'll get involved in your business if you're about his business. Right? You know, there's a reason why he said, seek me first. Right? It's because he knows that you're going to get the benefits if you're seeking him first. It's a law. The Bible says, whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You know, and you look at Galatians, he's talking not just about, you know, physical seed. He's talking about, you know, spiritual seed. And that if you look there in Galatians, he's talking about the laws of the flesh work that way. Well, the laws of the spirit work that way. That's how the kingdom works is by sowing and reaping. You know, God's whole message, you know, you look at his message, his whole plan for your life and for Jesus's whole life had to do with sowing and reaping. He said, I'll go into the earth. And then he said, he's going to reap all of us. You know, there's so many scriptures that talk about that, you know, as a grain of wheat fall on the ground and dies will produce big results. You know, he talks about that, you know, paraphrasing what he said there, but he went into the earth and he reaped you. And he believes in sowing and reaping. That's his laws. You know, if you want good things to happen for you, you got to believe in that law. Good measure, whatever you sow, good measure, press down, shaken together, running over, right? Well, John 9, uh, 9, 4 says it like this. We're going to read the Amplified version of it. It says, we must work the works of him who sent me and be busy with his business while it is daylight. Night is coming on. And when no man can work. That's what he says there, though. He says, work with him who sent me and be busy with his business. You know, it's easy not to think about his business, but it's important that we're keeping that at the forefront of our thinking, his business. What is his business? Does God have some business going on on the earth? Yes, he's always had business going on, on the earth. And he uses us. We're his hands. We're his feet. To get his business done, right? That's why he's always dealing with us about his business. Now, that can be, like I said, in any capacity. Maybe you're called to ministry today. You minister, you know. Maybe you're called to business today. That would be your business. You'd be given to, the, you know, make sure that the message is getting out, you know, and using your business to reach people, you know. But, you know, God has some business. You know, he wants you to be about his business, right? We've talked about this before. He likes to get people saved baptize the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking tongues and grow spiritually. Those are the things he's seeking for, right? He wants you to seek his interests. What are his interests? Well, like we said, get saved, get baptized with the Holy Spirit and get evidence of speaking in tongues and to grow spiritually and to get other people saved, baptized with the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues and to grow spiritually. Those are his interests today. You say, well, how do you see that? Well, the four gospels point to Jesus, Book of Acts points to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking tongues. See how they fall in order? The two thirds of the New Testament, you can look at all the others in between there, the book of Revelations, growing spiritually, right? And so 
We, we're supposed to be getting people saved, getting them baptized with the evidence, speaking in tongues, and then help them to grow spiritually. Let's look at the message version of John 4, 4 through 5. It says, Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There is no such cause effect here. Look inside for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here. Working while the sun shines, when night falls, the work day is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light. I am the world's light. Think about that, though. You know, being about his business. That keeps you on the pathway that he has for you, right? When you're about his business. Now, you know, it's kind of like a bicycle. You know, if you're on a bicycle, you take off on a bicycle, you take off one way, you know, and you might be heading towards the grass, (laughs) right? But if you get going, then you can stir that bike the way it needs to go. You know, that's and everything you have for God and everything God wants for you is in front of you, you know, and you need to be heading somewhere. You know, you need to be, you know that you've got direction. You know that you need to be doing these things to seek his interest. So you need to be heading towards and being led by the Holy Spirit. Of course, we never want to ride the whole, override the Holy Spirit. You need to be guided by him and however he wants you to go about these things. But you need to listen to the Holy Spirit and let him guide you and direct you. You know, you think about, you know, if you want a good marriage, you have to care about the other person, right? You care about their needs. You know, you seek after those needs, you know, and then you end up, you get benefits for seeking after those needs. Well, you know, you think about with with God, you know, you're seeking his interests and caring about his interests with your relationship with him. Caring about those things, and it's, you're going to end up reaping the things that you need to have in your relationship with him. You say, that's selfish, Jeremiah. Well, no, it's not. That's God's law. And he's already paid for everything for you. Jesus paid for it all at the cross. We're not trying to get things. No, we're, we're, we're working his laws for things he's already paid for us. Let's look over Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 33rd verse. Notice what he says here. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Notice how he puts that to you. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Seeking him first. Why is that important? Well, you know, in sowing, you got to sow first before you're going to reap, Right? And if you want the right things coming your way, you have to be seeking those things first, seeking his plan first. You know, if you're going about his business, you're going to, he's going to get cared about your business. He's going to care about your affairs in this life. This is why so many people, they say, well, I just, I never hear from God and I never feel his presence. Well, you know, you're not about his business, (laughs) right? That should tell you right away that you're not hearing him because, you know, you're not involved and what he's involved in, you know, get involved with what he's involved with. He says, if you draw nigh unto me, you come after him first, he's going to draw nigh unto you, you know, and you're going to feel his presence and he's going to be more part of your life. The more you do that, you're going to reap more and more of that in your life. And so you have to be a person that's initiating it, going after it for it to happen in your life. Well, let's look at Matthew six thirty three in the Amplified. And I think it makes it a little bit clearer here. Listen to what it says in the Amplified. You say, what's the Amplified Bible? What amplifies it for you, the Greek for you, makes it a little bit more, brings it out a little bit more for us, right? Let's look at Matthew, the sixth chapter, and the 33rd verse, and the Amplified Classic Version says, but seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing. I like how it says that. And his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. Then all these things, what are those things? Right, He's, he already told you. He said all these things will be taken to be taken together will be given to you. Besides, so all the things that you're wanting in this life, the things that you're needing and desiring, you know, the things that He's put on your heart and that you're desiring for your life, and He'll, he'll take care of you if you seek Him first. You know, and he, He's going to meet your desires and the things that you've been desiring because He's put those desires in there, godly desires. He's going to meet those things in your life if you're seeking him first. It's just all going to be on the pathway of seeking him first. But we have to put him first. You know, and that that means you're going to have to take a little extra time. You have to get up in the morning. You have to put him first. (laughs) 
<laughs> right? Or even when you go into bed, you gotta pretty you gotta make sure you don't close those eyes yet. You know, read a few read a few scriptures. Put him first, right? Don't put your sleep first. Put him first, right? You know, and you you're thinking about his business. You're putting his business and his affairs first, and he's going to take care of your business and your affairs first. He cares about your interests, right? But you know, you're stopping those things if you're doing nothing. Think about that today. You know, you're stopping the blessings of God if you're doing nothing. What do you say in the scripture, Deuteronomy 28? He says, he'll bless what you put your hand to, right? You've got to initiate something for him to do something. He'll, he's the one that causes increase. The Bible says that one man sows, another one waters. But who brings the increase? He says, God brings the increase. Think about that today. We don't know how it happens. We don't know how that, you know, it's amazing. The world even knows this. You know, you go out and you plant a seed and it's amazing. It just comes up out of the ground. Don't know how. Don't We're not sure how this happens, you know, but it just it grows and comes out of the ground. It's a great miracle just to see a tomato grow, <laughs> if you think about it today. You know, because God is the God of increase. He causes things to increase, especially if you put them in the right ground and you're in the right pathway and you're going after his interests. He's going to cause things to increase in your life, right? He said, what? Cause things to increase in my life? Yeah, he'll cause things, good things, to happen in your life, praise the Lord. So Jesus knew if he was about his father's business, his every need would be met. Think about that today. He knew he started his life out this way, you know, and he, he's already in the synagogue and he's already looking at the word. He knows if I keep on that pathway, all of the things that I need are going to be within that pathway. Think about that today. Pathways, my wife loves to say. <laughs> you should be thinking about that tonight. Pathways. You know, you, you had a choice today. What pathway did you take? Did you go to church or did you not go to church? Right? Did you did you listen to that message that you need to listen to today and encourage yourself, or you didn't listen to that message today and encourage yourself? Did you read the Bible? Or you didn't read. And you say, "Well, why did I end up at the end of the day like I did?" Well, what did you do? <laughs> the pathways. You get choices every day to stay along that path that God has for your life. Praise the Lord, because it's if you're about His interest, God will bless you with his, your interest. He's going to take care of your interest, right? Mark, the 12th chapter. Let's look at this real quick. Mark, the 12th chapter, the 31st. says it like this. And you, I know you're familiar with it. It says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Why would he make commandments? He just wants you to suffer. He wants you to be like, oh man, I got, I got, if I don't do these, God's going to strike me down with lightning. <laughs> why did he call? Why did he give us a direction with commandments, right? You know, you see in the in the you know in the capitals and different places, they put the Ten Commandments. They try to remove them here in America, you know, but but they have the Ten Commandments. Why are those so important? Well, what, well if you look at all those commandments, they're the law of love. We're going somewhere with this. You say, well, man, Jeremiah, you take a long way to get to divine appointments. Well, we're just, we're trying to get there, but it's important that you know how to get in the right direction to get divine appointments, right? Think about this today. You know, I mean, if you, these commandments are about walking a certain pathway is what it's all about, about walking the pathway of love, right? And all the blessings are in the pathway of walking in love, you know, your flesh tries to get you to do other things that aren't walking in love. You know, say something mean and get you to go do things you shouldn't do. And they're pulling you another direction, trying to get you off that pathway, you know. But if you stay on that pathway of love, everything is within that pathway to fulfill the destiny that God has for your life. That's why he gave us the Ten Commandments, because he wanted you to stay on the right direction and pathway so that you can get the things that you're needing in this life. Praise the Lord. Why? You know, he gave us two great commandments. But notice what he says here. That's to love the Lord with all your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength. And the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other greater commandment than these. Now, it's important when you think about this because he's he's saying, hey, if you'll sow this direction, you know, you, you're, you're putting effort into Loving the Lord. and How do you love the Lord? By, you know, he told Peter, said, feed his sheep. 
going being about his business. Think about that today. How you love the Lord? Well, you're about what he cares about. You're showing him that you love him every day in thankfulness and gratitude, but you're about what he cares about. You know, you're going to reap the things that you need to have in this life. If you're caring about others, you're going to reap the things that you need to have in this life. The full Ten Commandments is all about walking in love, you know. It says, thou shalt not kill. Well, you know, that's walking in love when you don't kill somebody, right? <laughs> thou shalt not steal. Well, that's walking in love when you don't steal from people, right? But, you know, it's important that we're walking in that pathway that God has for us, staying along the pathway of love. Now, this is an opposite message in the world that we're living in today. You know, you listen to, man, people just, they want to express their feelings they care so much about how they feel, you know, because you're not going to feel like walking love every day. You're not going to feel like being in this pathway every day, you know, but that's the direction he wants for you. And you have to be steady about it to reap all the blessings that God wants you to have in this life. You know, you've got to be steady about getting up and seeking him first. You got to be steady about trying to meet his interests on a daily basis. You got to be steady for him because you want your benefits to come in steadily. You know, what is that my pastor used to say? He said, if you put something out on every wave, you're going to reap something on every wave. You know, uh, my, my son recently, he was working on something for a, a ministry, you know, and he's helping a ministry. And he the benefits he's receiving just because he was doing it, just was reaping things, benefits all the time, you know. But, you know, it's because he's doing it over and over and over, so he keeps repeating benefits over and over and over. Being about the Father's business. <laughs> And you're going to reap the benefits that you're wanting to have in this life. And they're going to be wonderful. You're going to have great benefits, you know. And you're not just self-serving. You're going to want to do this because you're born again. You have the love of God in your heart. You're going to want to serve the Lord and, you know, and seek after him. And you, you want to do these things. You don't always feel like it. But the, your heart, because you're born again and, and you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, wants to do those things. It's just you have to be consecutively doing it over and every, every day, focusing on it so you're sowing seed. Then you see great benefits. You, you can't start out doing it a week and expect great benefits. One month, you know, you, you're going to see some benefits. But if you want consistent benefits and things, blessings coming into your life, you have to be consistent. You've got to be a consistent person. You can't no longer be one of those people that's a flash in the pan. You have to be consistent to reap the blessings of God, praise the Lord. I know this with working out, you know, and me, and my friend, or me and my brother Michael, you know, he would hold me accountable, make sure I'm working out, you know. But man, if I if I didn't work out three or four times a day, I don't see any benefits, you know. Once a week, yeah, you see some. <laughs> but if you work out three and four times a week, you start seeing the benefits. You start seeing that you're feeling better. You you start seeing that you. That, you know, that you're looking better. You start seeing that it's having great benefits for it because of your consistency, you know. Now, I remember, you know, when I first started working out, you know, I went to the gym. I was feeling really bad. I mean, I was feeling really bad. In the middle of the night, I, I would get sick and I, I just felt horrible. And I said, man, I'm going to start walking just for 45 minutes a day, you know. And so I'd go and go to the gym. Even if I felt like it or not, I'd walk for 45 minutes a day. I, well, I wasn't doing nothing special. I wasn't lifting weights or anything, but I'd just go and I'd walk for 45 minutes a day. It was amazing. I'm dropping weight, feeling better, heartburn's leaving me. The great benefits just by doing something consistently, you know. Well, you know, if you're seeking God's interest consistently, oh, you're going to see great benefits from him if you're being consistent about what you're doing, God's going to keep, because he cares about you and he wants those benefits in your life. But, you know, he doesn't force anything on us. You have to be a person that's seeking those benefits. Yeah, that's why he gives you these laws and so you can get those benefits in your life. You say, well, why did he just throw them in my life? Because he doesn't force anything on you, right? Why didn't he just make it happen? Well, because he doesn't make you do anything. He didn't put a gun to your head and say, get saved. <laughs> no. He gave you that opportunity for Jesus to come into your life. And you, once you did that, you got saved and it changed your life forever. Think about that today. You know, and if you're not saved today, it'll change your life forever. If you'll get saved and accept Jesus in your life, praise the Lord. Let's look over at Luke, the 22nd chapter, the 35th verse. And uh, let's see here. We just read 
Luke 12, 30. Let's look at Luke 22, 35. It says, And he said to them, When I sent you out with no purse or provision, bag or sandals, did you lack anything? They answered nothing. And so he sent some people out, you know, and they, they, to do some things for him, because he sent them, and they didn't lack anything, right? Think about that today, you know. If you're about the Father's business, your needs are going to be met. You're not going to lack anything, right? You need to make sure that you're being listened to the Holy Spirit. Make sure that you're guided and directed by the Holy Spirit. He always has the final word. But, you know, he's going to take care of your wants, your needs, your desires. And I said it, wants and needs and desires. You say, well, where are you getting those scriptures from? Well, you know, the Bible says, and the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In Psalms one, uh, Psalms 23, right? He says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give the desires of your heart, is what the scripture says. No, he says, delighting in him. He's going to make sure that you have the desires, you know. And some people have a hard time. They just choke on that. Oh, he wants to help me with my desires and my wants. Well, they just choke on that when I say that, you know. But, you know, God cares about your wants and your desires. And he just asks you to seek him and be about his business, <laughs> <laughs> right? Consecutively, consistently, not one time a flash in the pan, but consistently. And you're going to see consistent things happening in your life. Let's look at Acts, the fourth chapter here. And their needs were all met. Let's look at Acts, the fourth chapter, in the 34th verse. It says, Neither was there anything among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of the lands of houses sold them and bought the prices of them, things that were sold and Lay them down the apostles' feet. Notice they're sowing it into good ground, right? They're selling some things, but they're sowing into good ground, right? And distribute was made to every person according as they had need. Think about that today, you know. But they, they took care of everybody. It produces, after, when you sow into good ground, it takes care of the needs, the wants, the desires, right? When you're seeking God's plan and his purpose for you. But he says here in the very first, he says, neither was there lack among them. And so they didn't lack anything. Think about that today. There was no lack. <laughs> you say, well, I'm lacking. Well, what are you about? Are you about the interests of God? You know, I'm lacking right now. Well, you know, and then you may lack even when you start sowing for a while because you got to give it time to produce, you know, and you got to be patient. You know, but when you start going that way, you'll see it start, God will confirm it. He'll start showing you things that are coming your way. But, you know, you have to be consistent, constantly sowing the first year. And by the end of the year, you may see a huge change. The second year, maybe even better. But you have to be consistently sowing, you know, and you're going about his plan. And you're going to see consistent blessings, and they're just going to get better every year as you're sowing, as long as you're being consistent. But you got to be a person of consistency, right? Let's get a drink here. Amen. Well, let's look at Matthew, the 21st chapter. Matthew 21. Notice what Jesus says here. He says in Matthew, the 21st chapter, the second verse, he says, and say to them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied, and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, seat, or meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt and a fowl of an ass. I'm talking about a donkey there. <laughs> the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded and brought the, the donkey and the colt. I, I used donkey instead of ass there. And put them, their, their clothes, and they set him there thereon. But notice, there was provision there. He's, in, he's going about his business, and going about the destiny that Jesus had for his life, and there was provision there. Why? Because he's about the Father's business. You know, so many people aren't provided for because they don't put him first. They're not about his business. They say, well, why is things dried up in a certain area? What has he told you to do? Are you about the father's business, you know? 
If Jesus had been doing something else, let's say he's out catching fish, he wouldn't have been in, in the position to get this, you know. He wouldn't have been in the position to get the donkey that he needed at this particular time in prophecy, fulfilling a prophecy. But he was about the Father's business, right? What are you about today? You know, have you sat and thought about it today? What are you about today? What's your life? What are you doing today? Are you always about just, hey, I'm getting up and I've got all these things planned? Or are you putting him first, right? And being about his business and looking for opportunities that is, that is so into his interests every day. What are you about, you know, maybe even a few times a week you're doing some things about his interests, but you're sowing consecutively every month. You know, you're trying, you're starting where you're at today. Are you about his business? Praise the Lord, you know, and then he can get involved in your business if you're about his business. I remember, you know, when I was younger, you know, I uh, first went to a church to minister. I'll never forget, you know, and I wasn't expecting to get anything, you know, at all for ministering or anything like that. You know, I was excited. It was actually for, uh, I was ministering for a pastor I didn't even know, you know, went to minister for him. And I was just excited right out of Bible school. I was like, oh man, yeah, I'm pumped up. You know, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm so on fire. I, I just went off when I went to minister. I'm like, oh, I'm just like, whoo, 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 just flying out of me, you know. And I'm just pumped. I've got so many th things to say. Think about, it, you know, you're going to Bible school for hours and hours every day of the week, you know, and all of a sudden you started to ministry, you know, you're full of things you want to talk about, you know. I remember one time I was distributing waters, you know, for a church, and we had some guys come up that were from a Baptist church, and we were talking to them, and they just had so much to say, you know, while they were being fed at the university, you know, the Bible school they're going to, they're getting fed all the time, so they're ready just to be a, a fire hydrant to someone else, you know, so... I went out and you know, I'm minister of the message, you know, and I'm just pumped up, fire blazing, you know, shooting, shooting at the word, pumped up and, and trying to encourage them, you know, and you know, preach the message that I had on my heart, you know, and I got done, start to go home, you know, and I'll never forget the man handed me a check. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> you know, wasn't even thinking about getting paid, you know, I was like, wow. And it was a nice substantial check, but you know, I was about my father's business and he took us out to eat. I'll never forget, took us to a nice place to eat, you know. But I was about my father's business. Think about that. Time. He didn't have to give me a check. He didn't have to do anything for me, you know. But it was God confirming, hey, when you're about his business, he's going to take care of you. I'll never forget we started the church, you know, when back in, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember, it was like 2003, 2004, we started the church. And I mean, I was like, how are we going to have the money to do this? How are we going to do this? You know, at the time, we just left the youth pastor and went to Bethany, Oklahoma. And I mean, man, I, I didn't know how, if anybody ever come, <laughs> you know, I didn't know if there was going to be any money there, you know, we started doing it and it was, the money was, was there every week is amazing, you know, to see that the bills are paid for, the things were taken care of. Then we moved into a church, the bills were taken care of and God provided a place for us to have ministry, you know, and along that line and nice church we were in for some time and. Then we moved into another building, but God just consecutively just kept taking care of it and taking care of it. And when you're about his business, he takes care of his own things. And he takes care of you and your needs if you'll listen to him, praise the Lord. You'll reap his benefits if you'll be about the Father's business, praise the Lord. So, you know, and the enemy's not just going to sit back and go, oh, we just this is great. Just keep doing this, you know. And no, he's going to try to distract you. He's going to try to get you out. He doesn't have any power over you, but he'll try to distract you, right? He's a deceiver. He doesn't have power over you, but he's a deceiver. Matter of fact, he has no power over you, you know? He's a deceiver, and he likes to get cause divisions and get you off the track that you need to be going. He'll be like, this is better over here, and he'll try to deceive you to get you off. You know, he has no power over you, but he likes to deceive you, you know? And so you have to be very focused, you know, about the interests of God if you're going to fulfill what God has for your life today. Praise the Lord. You have to be a person that's focused on it, you know. I remember, you know, when I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, I was needing a job and I transferred up there for a job and we moved up there for Bible school and everything. And I've told this story about me going to Rama many times. But I forget, you know, I needed a job at some point, you know, and I've told this story a few times too, but it was very interesting, some things that happened along the line of me getting into the second job I had there, you know, and I was going to need money for Bible school, you know, I had to pay it every month, you know, and 
I was there for some time, and I'm like, man, you know, I, I wasn't making that great of money. <laughs> I transferred up there. Just got married and having a first baby. And uh, we, we got up there, and I was wanting another job. And I'll never forget, you know, we had the paper out. That kind of dates me a little bit. They had the paper out. And my wife says to me a question I never thought about in all my life, you know, because I always just worked. I felt like you just worked to be working. <laughs> and maybe you feel that way today. I just worked to be working, you know. And she said to me, what would you like to do? And I mean, man, that just hit my spirit so hard. And like, what would I like to do? You know, and it, it took me a minute, you know. And then she'd read all these jobs to me. And then uh, we looked at it, you know, and I ended up going to apply for it. i never forget, though, I went to get this job. And it's the one I was in most of the time I was in Tulsa. And uh, they started training for it. I went there and there was a gentleman there. And it was for a well-known minister is where this job was created for. You know, it was, he was creating this whole call center for a well-known minister. I, I would give you his name, but I'm going to keep that to myself right now. But he was a well-known minister. And uh, I'll never forget, you know, there was a gentleman driving from Texas back and forth trying to start this. And I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. Why? Because I'm about my father's business. I'm going to Bible school. I'm about his business. And God provided. You think about that. You know, well, he's going back and forth to start this business, going back and forth, and, and created all these jobs and good jobs. And, you know, and, he, and I had a job for me, you know. And he even asked me Bible questions in the interview. I was like, wow, that's a unique <laughs> job, you know. And then, uh, you know, we ended up really, really enjoying working for that ministry and working for that job for some time. We worked there for years, you know. And, uh, you know, I ended up even working there as a prayer minister at one point, you know, after some time. But, you know, it just, it was created. There was nothing there. That, that place didn't even exist. But it was along my pathway. And I had a ministry, I had a place that provided for me, you know. You know, you think about it, behind the scenes, God's working on all kinds of things. He's making sure that you have provision. If he has to create a job, if he has to start a business, He'll do whatever he has to do to make sure you have the provision that you need to have to fulfill the destiny that God has for your life, you know, and he did that for me. He did that literally, you know, there was no, there was nothing there and God opened the door for me so that I had somewhere to provide for me, my wife and the new baby that I had, you know, and he created a job for my wife. She worked there for some time too, but it's just amazing how he can do amazing things in his pathway if you'll let him do that for you. Let's look at Mark, the 14th chapter, the 13th verse. It says, And he sent forth two of his disciples and saith them, Go ye into the city, and there you shall meet a, a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. Think about this now. He's there. He's telling them, Go find a man with a pitcher of water and follow him. Yeah, that's kind of uncommon, right? They're, they're going to go to a city and look for somebody that has a pitcher of water. <laughs> You know, and God has somebody for you out there. Somebody uh, that's carrying the pitcher in their hand, and he's got them prepared for you, you know. People along your pathway that are just all along your pathway to help you. You know, we right now I can think of one that's helping us right now, you know, that's helping us and prays for us and helps us with different things, you know. But he puts them in your pathway to help you praise the Lord and he may use different people, people you wouldn't expect, <laughs> you know, to help you along your pathway. That's why you don't want to burn bridges. That's why you want to be a loving person because you never know who God will send to help you when you're needing help in your pathway. Praise the Lord. But notice he said, he said, for two of his disciples said to him, go ye into the city and there shall be a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. That's unusual, you know. You know, it's interesting sometimes, you know, God will lead you to somewhere, start a business, lead you to be in a certain place, and God will guide you and direct you just because you're there on time when he wants you to be at a certain place at a certain time, you know. You know, I, I remember one time, you know, I really liked uh, Charles Johnson, the Revivers. I don't know if you ever heard of them. If you hadn't, look them up online. They're really a great Christian band, you know, and I, I, I like Charles Johnson. I think he's a really great he's passed away now, you know, but I wanted to meet him, you know, I thought he was cool and I wanted to meet him, you know, well, I'd go, I went to see him, he'd be in a great big place, you know, I remember I went and seen him at the uh, Maybe Center and I was like, oh man, I mean, it's a big place and 
And I'll never forget, you know, we went over there, me and my son Ethan went over there, we had, had him sign something for us, just thought it was so cool, you know, that yeah, he's just uh, he's one of our heroes, you know, and stuff. And uh, But it was interesting, I really wanted to meet him, you know, and I'll never forget, and I was uh, calling around, I wanted to sing some of his music at the church I was at as a youth pastor, and then I, I was calling to see his ministry to see if I could get a hold of somebody, you know, to get some of his tracks, you know, accompanying tracks when you sing. And I called him, and they went. They said, "Well, let us transfer you to somebody that can help you with this." You know, because I, I called the ministry, <laughs> they transferred me right to his bus, and I got to talk to him specifically. So I was talking to Charles Johnson on the telephone on his bus. You know, it was so cool. So I got to spend time talking to him, and, and then I got, to, and then I went to a church. It was out in the middle of nowhere, Sepulpa, Oklahoma. He was ministering out there, and. And I got to meet him. He was sitting by himself on, in a chair right when I walked in. You know, divine appointments. God will sit you up with divine appointments. Meet people. Meet your heroes. Put you in places, you know. I mean, I've got story after story of how I got to meet people. and You know, and got to be around people, you know, that my heroes in God. And God's used them in my life, you know. But divine appointments and places and people that affected your life and provision, unbelievable for provision, you know, that he'll make sure that you have the things that you need to have. Let's finish this story, the 12, 14th verse. And whatsoever ye shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, the master saith, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room from furnished and prepared there and make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. You know, I, I'll never forget, you know, when I was starting the church and I started there in Bethany, you know, I had in my heart a desire to be able to start in a coffee house, you know, this particular coffee house. This wasn't just any coffee house. This was a large coffee house. It was considered one of the nicest businesses in that town. And uh, and I wanted to start the church there. i never forget, you know, and then I, we called him up and I believe my wife called him. And uh, we got a hold of the uh, minister, got a hold of the person there, and we ended up uh, working with him, and we ended up securing the whole building, which this was a busy coffee house, you know, and we secured the whole building. Every Sunday, we were able to get that building, you know, for our ministry at that coffee house, you know. It was a desire in my heart. I knew that was one of the nicest places. That was back when the coffee houses were a big deal, and, and you know, they were kind of new, and we were kind of excited about it, and they had a big room for us to be able to have a church in there, and we were able to have, they would serve food and coffee, you know. Well, then my desires changed. And it's interesting because God will lead you on paths and he'll change your desires. You know, he says, delight yourself in the Lord. And he'll give the desires of your heart. Well, he puts desires in there. And he also gives you the desires to do his will and to fulfill. You don't just desire certain things. God puts desire. If you're spending time with him and his presence, he's birthing desires on the inside of you to do great things for him. Just like you're here today, he's putting things in your heart right now, you know, birthing desires and dreams in your heart. You know, well, we were desire all of a sudden I had this desire for a different kind of church. And I was like, how am I going to get in there? You know, well, it's interesting because there was a church uh, right there on 39th Expressway, Bethany, you know, that I wanted to be in. My brother actually went there when I was young, when I was very young. And he went there, and that's where he had gotten saved. It was actually a church that he got gotten saved. They closed the church down. And uh, it was interesting. Cause it, the Lord opened that door because they were trying to sell that building, and we were able to renovate that building, use that building, and minister and have our ministry in there for some time. You know, anybody I had a desire for it. And I actually had saw in my spirit that I would be ministering in a blue carpeted church some time before that. I was like, man, that's interesting, a blue carpeted church. And then I went in there, and this place had all blue carpet all over the place, and that was where I was ministering. Very interesting, you know. Paths, prearranged and picked for us. You know, God has special things, but it's along that path of seeking his interests. It's along about putting him first. It's amazing how he can meet the needs of your family for you, make life better for you. It's all within that path that he has for your life. We see that with Jesus. We see that with along his pathway, how God took care of him. the father, took care of Jesus on his pathway. You know, he's the perfect example of being led by the Holy Spirit. You look at the four gospels, he teaches us what it's like to be led by the Holy Spirit. He was a hundred percent man 
and he was 100% God. And he taught us about how to live and guide our lives by listening to the Holy Spirit, you know. You know, some people think, well, just because he's just a still, small voice, the Holy Spirit, but he can get loud. He can talk loud to you. He can help you if you're going to get off the pathway. He can speak loud to you. He, he can make sure that you hear him, you know. He, I believe he'll draw me a picture if I need it, you know. <laughs> he's going to keep me on the pathway because he loves me, Right. And he, he's trying to keep you along that pathway because he's got good things all along that path. But you've got to be a person willing to listen to the Holy Spirit. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for your mercy today. Father, we ask, Lord, that you've, that since you've ministered to these, your sheep, Father, help them to be encouraged, help them be refreshed, help them take these words that you've spoken into their lives, whatever it was through this message that you spoke to them, Father, help it to bear fruit Father, help it to grow in their spirit. We pray your word never returns void. And we just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. If there's someone here that doesn't know Jesus today, you need to know him, right? Don't don't go away from this podcast without knowing Jesus today. The Bible says if you confess Jesus as Lord and believe God's risen Jesus from the dead, that's Romans 10, 9 and 10, now you shall be saved. Do you want to be saved today? Well, pray this with me today. Father, I believe that you've risen Jesus from the dead. And Father, I confess Jesus is Lord of my life right now. Jesus, I don't, I don't want to do nothing else. I want to serve you. And I just ask for that. I ask for you to be my Lord right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you did that, pray that prayer, you are saved right there where you're at. If you believe God raised Jesus from the dead and you confessed him out of your mouth, you are saved right there where you're at. I'd love to hear about it. Put it in the comments. I want to email me at Jeremiah S. Ministries. Let me and Sheila and Liam know about it. We're praying for you right before the podcast. We'd love to hear about it and celebrate with you. Glory to God. And we just thank you, Father, for it. Praise you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Thank you right now for it. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. And Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory for it in Jesus' name. Well, hey, we, we enjoyed our time together with you. Look forward to next time. Hey, tune in with us. We'll try to be there Wednesday. God bless you. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Get ready. Amen.